Hi, I'm Carl Soule. I've been working with Premiere Pro for a number of years now. And I'm Kevin Monahan. I'm a longtime Final Cut Pro editor. And times have changed. I'm looking to make the switch to Premiere. So, Carl, I just need a little bit of help getting started. So, okay, breathe in. Okay, breathe out. Okay, a couple of big. It's all good. A couple of big breaths. Um, I think what you're going to find is uh, the similarities far outweigh the differences. But I know there's a lot of little things that can really uh, kind of hang up somebody who's trying to make the switch. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the first thing I got to know is, you know. I have an idea of why I want to change to Premiere, but can you show me some of the big things that I, I need to know before I get into this? Absolutely. Well, we're hearing this from a lot of people because of the new playback engine inside of Premiere Pro CS5. Um, the Mercury, right? Mercury playback right. engine is, is what we've been calling it. And uh, some of the benefits from it, uh, Premiere Pro works natively with a lot of different footage, um, everything from AVC Intra, RED footage. Uh, DSLR footage, you can just drag it and drop it right on the timeline and just have it playback. It doesn't have to be rewrapped or transcoded or anything. Awesome. Um, so that's a huge time saver for a lot of people. The other thing is just the power of the playback engine. It's uh, multi-core optimized. It's uh, not only multi-threaded, but it actually will split threads. And on the Mac, it uses the Grand Central Dispatch technology mm -hmm. to make sure that all the cores in the system are being utilized. So if you have an eight-core system, and you're kind of used to maybe having just one or two of those cores actually being used for editing, mm -hmm. Premiere Pro makes a big difference. Um, this is just a quick example that I have thrown up here in, uh, in Premiere Pro. This is a 10-layer a sequence all of these clips are, uh, it's kind of a mix and match of uh, HD footage. Some of this is uh, uh, P2 footage, uh, some of it's AVC intro, some of it is uh, from a Canon uh, 5D Mark II. And uh, again, I can just hit play on this timeline. Nothing has to be pre-rendered to be able to play back this footage in real time. And this even is the all, key here? Or? Even the key. The wow. key is actually all happening uh, real time. Mm -hmm. um, and if I want to go in and make some changes to this, maybe, uh, you know, in fact, let's go in and uh, I've got the effect controls open here, if I wanted to just adjust the brightness or the contrast mm -hmm. on this uh, keyed clip here, I can do all those changes. And again, I can immediately hit play, and uh, the engine gets up to speed there, and I can see it play back at, uh, at full frame rate. So again, I don't have to wait for things to render. That's pretty awesome. Um, now, this image looks fairly fairly good. Uh, am I playing back at full resolution with all these layers here? Yeah, actually, on this system, this is an 8-core uh, Mac Pro tower mm -hmm. that we're playing off of. Um, this is playing back at full resolution, uh, full, uh, full frame output. Um, we've got it up on the monitor there. I've got it here. Uh -huh. um, Premiere does have a little trick for, uh, for people that want to uh, run it at a lower resolution. If okay. you're running on like a laptop system, maybe you don't have this power. There's right, a right. way that you can continue to edit, and it'll actually run the uh, display at like a half res or quarter res okay. so that you can get smooth playback even How do on I a lower end system. It's, uh, it's a little right click in the uh, program monitor. Oh, okay. I can change playback resolution there. So there you can see we're playing this back at full resolution. And there's also a setting for uh, paused resolution oh, okay. if you need to look at fine detail when you're paused on a frame. Oh, like if you're adjusting a key or something like that. Exactly. Now, I noticed that there's a couple that were grayed out there. Why, why didn't it go down to quarter or what? Is there a reason for that? Or? Oh, it, it depends on what resolution you're working at. Uh, most people, you're not going to need to get down into like 8th res or 16th right. res when you're working with, uh, this timeline is a DVC Pro HD timeline. Mm -hmm. uh, that's more for people who are editing on like red footage, where you're oh, talking I about see. like 4K right, or 5K right. footage, right. Um, which you can do. You can bring it in natively. But uh, you know, playback, even on an 8-core system, that's a lot of pixels to decode. Right, right. OK, um, just looking at the interface here, I, I see a lot of Similar things. I see uh, you've got a project window to the left there. I, that's normal. I, I, I found that here. This is probably the source monitor here. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the record monitor to the right there, timeline. That all looks pretty familiar to me. Um, but down here, I don't know what this thing is here. Could you please explain that to me? Oh, this is the uh, the media browser. Um, the media browser is a way of looking at clips before you go and add them to your project. Oh, that's nice. So here I've got a bunch of folders with a bunch of different types of footage here. You can see R3D files from a RED camera, mm -hmm. DVC Pro, AVC Intra, even DPX sequences. Okay, so I know that in Final Cut, to play DPX sequences, I'm going to need a lot of horsepower and I'm going to need an expensive plug-in. So you're telling me I can just play DPX uh, off the timeline? Uh, right on the timeline. In fact, they act just like any other video clip. I can take the first frame of my DPX sequence 
and you can see it loads up here in my source monitor, and I can go through and scrub through this and play it back. Oh, pretty cool, man. So once you have the footage that you're looking for, you want to add this to your project. All you have to do is take it, you can drag it and drop it into your project bin, but you also have the ability to just take it, and I could actually drop this uh, DPX sequence right on my timeline if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's going to add now a 12th layer here, <laughs> and I could then take this clip Scale it and, down uh, and play those 12 layers. <laughs> scale it down, yeah. and now I've got uh, another layer uh, added on top of my uh, project here. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, the thing I don't see in the interface here um, that I'm looking for is uh, my tools. Now, I, I don't see my tools anywhere. Well, uh, Premiere actually takes the tools and it tries to, uh, and this is something kind of interesting you brought this up because in CS4 and earlier versions, we did actually put them kind of in the same places where Final Cut Pro keeps the tools, oh, okay. down over next to the timeline. Okay. But a lot of people asked about uh, keeping them uh, more in line with the way After Effects is set up, oh. but in After Effects, they're all at the top. Oh, so I if see. You now. see up here. Okay, yeah, they're up here, there. there. Okay. The great thing about Premiere Pro, the user interface uh, is completely customizable. So if I did want to move this down and have it share the real estate with my audio monitors mm -hmm. here, there's a little set of, uh, of dots. And you'll see these dots kind of in the upper left corner of most of the panels. Okay. So if I want to pick up and move a panel, I just grab it by the dots. And you'll see here it's actually broken it out as a separate panel for me. Mm -hmm. Or I can take this, and as I move this around, you'll notice that uh, I'm getting this weird uh, kind of a guys. purple color here. Yeah, yeah. So what this is saying, if I want to have it nest in the same real estate, I drop it in the middle. But I if see. I want to have it create a new area above or below or left or right of an area, mm -hmm. I take it and I drop it in, the, uh, in that appropriate area, and it's going to automatically do that. Okay. So in this case, if I want to have the share real estate, I just take it and drag it here. And now I actually have two different tabs, which you can see here I can switch between the Audio Master here. Now that's not what you typically see in Final Cut though, right? No, you see them uh, one on top of the other. The, the tools will be on top and the audio meters usually float on the bottom there. Okay, but so I what I can do is take this and uh, you want the tools on the top? Yeah. Or if you want the tools on the bottom, I can okay. do that. That's very sweet. So I, I assume you can do, th do this with any of the windows Any here. of the other panels. And if you start getting uh, lost and, you know, there are times where I've accidentally like taken this panel and you know, dropped it on top mm -hmm. of my timeline, for example. Uh, if something bad happens where you've gone in and you've changed something and you say, whoa, oh, wait Lord. a minute, this is not what I want, <laughs> yeah. um, it's easy enough to come up to the workspace here and just say reset the current workspace. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to, of course, ask you if you want to do that. And once you do that, everything goes back to the way it was. Okay. That, <laughs> <laughs> that scared me for a minute there. Uh, wow. Just a lot here. Already. Well, we got a lot more to cover, and okay. uh, so we've got a lot more videos coming, and uh, hopefully you guys will uh, enjoy the rest of these videos as we go through this entire series on uh, tips and tricks on how to switch uh, from Final Cut Pro over to Premiere Pro. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, man.